Hello, it's me again, Sarah Weiss, infamous pickleball player. <coughs> um, yeah, what a trip it's been. I am, I'm like, I'm revved up now. Uh, I feel really good. I just want to say uh, I went through all the, the messages and comments uh, over the past two weeks and you know, I, I've, I noticed them and I kind of saw them as they were coming in. But to be able to go back, you know, now it's been two weeks, two weeks since the U.S. Open. Um, going over all the comments and just being able to see and receive. I couldn't respond to every single one because, I mean, there's just hundreds. And I do want to also enjoy my Sunday with my family. But I, 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 I saw and at least gave a, a heart to all of them that I, that I noticed. I love you guys so much. My goodness. Um, wow. And I've been on shows, I've been on podcasts, I've been on open Zoom calls with Q&As. The conversation has been evolving. <clears throat> I've been learning a lot about everything. And I got the honor of yesterday, I think it was yesterday, uh, either yesterday or the day before, now I can't even remember, everything is it's just a whirlwind. But speaking to the two founders of the US Open that I was at, and it was an amazing conversation. It was an incredible conversation. And the fact that they're including me in the conversation for the new updates that they want to do for transgender policies, it's an honor. It's an absolute honor. Uh, the first thing that they said was, thank you so much for being there. And throughout all the crap that I was dealing with, showing up in love, happiness, and joy. And they apologized for not saying anything on social media. And I was like, do not apologize. I understand. <laughs> I understand of all people, um, I can understand why you wouldn't want to be in the middle of the noise and the, the pot stirring on social media. It can get ugly. Um, in fact, the icons women that I've been talking about, they posted again. I didn't even know, but they posted again. Once the article that the pickler wrote, they posted it and ca again called me a uh, trans identifying male. And, and it was again, another nasty post. But this time there was a lot of people in there that, that were like, we're unfollowing you. What is up with this? What's with the hate? And it was actually kind of interesting to see, but I do want to say that the conversations that, that have been had are amazing. The founders of the U.S. Open um, are including me in, in giving feedback on their policies and what they're doing right now. Like their, their latest policies were from three years ago and they're like in light of what's going on, you know, I think it's time we update. So their, their view on this is to kind of follow suit of what's happening around North America and, and you know, all the professional leagues, what they're doing and, and their ways of handling it. And it, it seems like it's going to be kind of on a case by case basis type of thing with other, you know, details. Like, so they're, they're going through all of this, but I just want you guys to know that this conversation is being had <clears throat> with professionals, with people who actually have valid opinions on this topic. And I can tell you this much, the way it's looking, everything's going to be fine for me. Um, more than fine. I'm really, really happy with how everything's going, how this conversation, this crossfire man, this situation is leading to a lot of, what do I say, evolution in sports, in gender, in what, what it means to be in sport with a gender, any gender, with what my situation is. Um, there's a lot of evolution happening and I, I feel really blessed and privileged to be part of this. So as much as it was like really hard to go through in the first little bit, like especially while I was down there, um, this is turning into such an amazing opportunity. And I thank everyone who's sharing their opinions, whether they agree with me or not, um, this is a great way to express how you feel about it so that more uh, education can happen, um, awareness can be brought up, I, I got on a call with a good friend of mine who I've known in the professional world for many, many years. And she messaged me talking about how she disagreed because she uh, was a high level gymnast and competed at a high, high level. So she wanted to call me because she's very respectful, very professional. She's an incredible human being. So she called me and we had an awesome conversation about it. And it's the way that I'm able to vocalize 
what's happening and communicate what's happening and my perspective and, and handle other perspectives has, as again, it's been evolving like crazy. I've been doing all these calls, podcast shows and having these conversations nonstop now. But this, this lady who I spoke to, who I have like, I've always held in very high regard. She's a very professional, successful lady. And to find out that she was a, uh, a highly competitive gymnast, I just, I looked up to her even more. And I even told her that like, uh, I look up to her. It's funny. You know, she she was disagreeing with me, and I, I just look up to her. But she was talking about her feelings on things. And, you know, it goes back to a very similar conversation in most most times, you know, chromosomes, biology. And she has a background in biology, too. So what she was saying was there was, there was a lot of merit to the science side. But then it's always, you know, anyone can always agree that there are many, many women stronger, faster, taller than me. Um, and you know, it, it's funny, I was talking to the, the founders of the U S open and we were talking about the top women pro right now, the top female pro in, in pickleball, <laughs> Annalie Waters. So let's com let's use her as the comparison. If anyone is taller, stronger, faster than her, is it fair that they compete? <laughs> She's a 16 year old girl who, who whops everybody. <laughs> It's amazing. It's incredible. But then there are six foot five women with 16 size 16 men's shoes who could play for the NFL. What would you say when you come up against her? She, it's not fair for her to play. So, I mean, we're beyond the fact that some women are born with biological advantages. Most of them end up becoming athletes because they were born with those advantages. And many have much more advantage than I do. So it's not about that. And we've realized this. What the conversation then becomes about is your perspective on me and gender. The perspective being, if you see me as some male trying to steal from women, then yeah, you're going to think of me as an intruder and want me gone. That's the issue. Because, I, and I asked my friend, I'm like, what will you do if you're competing against a woman who you respect and love and adore and she's, you know, your friend and she's a, a, an incredible competitor and she beats you? How are you going to feel about that? And she's like, I would celebrate her. Yeah, you would. What about if I beat you? Would you be pissed off? Well, yeah, I'd be kind of pissed off. See, that's the difference. If you understood that I am a woman and I'm not sitting here delusionally saying I'm just like every other woman. No, I have slight differences. Yeah, I do. I do. So do most women from other women. There's tons of women with different biological differences and stuff. Doesn't mean they shouldn't be celebrated when they do well. So the moment that, you know, this woman and other women can actually see me as a woman, then they will celebrate when I do well, instead of feeling like I'm some male intruder trying to steal from you. No, it's not how it is. So that's kind of the way this conversation has been going as I'm starting to realize that it's much, much more, much way beyond this whole, you have advantages thing. Cause I mean, the advantages I have, which are mainly training passion, uh, my, my height. Yeah. Five, being five, ten and a half is an advantage against the average height, but there's also many other women taller than me, stronger than me, faster than me. I mean, I can say it until I run out of air in my lungs, but we already know this. So anyways, uh, point being this is much this is beyond that and that that's the conversation that really needs to be had you know and defining what a woman is and for women to be more inclusive of women with differences anyways uh the conversation that i've had with the founders of the u.s open is incredible um i'm going to continue to be part of the conversation and you know, we, we were like talking about, you know, what do we do with this? Cause we don't want anyone else to experience what I had. I can handle it. I mean, even someone like me had a hard time with it, but I can handle it. What about other people who don't have the support that I do or the ability to stay strong in the face of it? I don't want that for anybody. So what do we do about that? And you know, it's not something we want to go loud and proud about and go intense about transgender, this and this and this and that, but something that, you know, I recommended and I, I believe is something that should be done. And I think they, they, they want to adopt this is just promoting diversity and inclusion. That really is what this is about. Accepting diversity, accepting inclusion, being open-minded to these conversations instead of being so narrow-minded to something we don't understand that it 
pulls out the hate and fear in us. Being open to these conversations and going, yeah, this world is evolving really quickly. How can we evolve with it? Anyways, lots of awesome conversations are being had and, and still continue to need to be had. So I'm going to continue to be part of this conversation. Um, you know, as I've said many times, it's not something that I wanted to be part of because I liked being under the radar, but I'm actually embracing in a, in, with a very open heart now. I don't care that everything's kind of like out in the open now. At this point, I did before, but now I, I don't care because I feel like I'm part of something bigger than myself. I've always, you know, I, I'm a big Marvel geek and uh, something that continues to be rung over and over in my head is from Doctor Strange. Marvel geeks, you know, say in the comments, where are you? Where are my, my Marvel fans? Um, Doctor Strange. It was, I forget her name, but the lady who, you know, she's, she's got the bald head, but she's the Sorcerer Supreme. I forget what her name is. I don't even know if they say her name, but her Sorcerer Supreme who trained Doctor Strange and she was she says to dr strange you're forgetting something important it's not about you it's not about you this goes this repeats in my head a lot and it has not just recently but it always has just as soon as i heard that it's not about you it's not about you i'm big on like this collective consciousness that we're all part of that you know we're just a piece of it of the billions of eyes of consciousness and i'm going deep and I'm, i don't need to go too deep but that 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 line it's not about you i hear it in my head a lot and i feel like being part of this conversation really gives me a way to give back to hopefully the masses as many people as i can just by sharing my story i don't have to get scientific and medical and, and try and have a ton of opinions on this i just want to share my story and hope that it reaches some people uh, i've got a lot of stories already out of this like the fact that and anyone should be able to relate the, to this is the fact that a lot of noise can be had in the background and in our minds that don't match what's really happening in front of us. You know, the, the example that I can put into words for you guys is the fact that, you know, when I was in the U.S. Open, there was a lot of noise in the background that almost made me give up. But when I showed up, that wasn't my reality. My reality was beautiful. It was incredible. It was, it was amazing. I had a blast. Uh, you know, a, a partner of mine stepped, uh, stepped down and someone stepped up. Um, everything there was incredible. But the noise, the imaginary background Twitter crap almost made me give up. And it wasn't even real if, as far as my reality is concerned. My reality was amazing. And that story alone holds so much value. That I hope that you guys, you know, whenever you're you're in a position where you're going through all the what ifs and the anxiety and all these things that could go wrong and fill in the blanks. I mean, our minds are go crazy, especially like in sports. Our minds are super, super powerful. So the fact that what's happening up up here really isn't our reality unless we make it our reality. That's a huge lesson to be taken from this. Um, athletes totally understand what I'm talking about, but anyone who's dealing with crap. Um, whether it's a loss of a loved one or someone who wronged you or being cheated on or, or whatever, the noise that goes on in our head does not have to be our reality. We make it our reality if we choose to. So that lesson alone is a huge, huge piece that I'm taking from it for my own, for my own life, but happily to sh happy, happily sharing it with others, hoping that that story impacts you in some way. Anyways, it was really amazing speaking to the founders uh, the fact that they're keeping me in the conversation and making sure that uh, what they're doing is following basically the evolution of sport, gender, and everything, and including me in that. It's, it's amazing. So I just, again, I want to thank them, Chris and Terry. I want to thank you guys for all the love and support that you've given me over the past two weeks, especially, you know, going over the old comments that I've seen over the past two weeks. Now, finally. <laughs> wow. I'm so blessed. And you guys are too, because you got me too. I got your back, no matter what. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Mwah.